In part one of the flight controls module, we will cover rudders, elevators, and stabilizer. In part two, we will cover ailerons and spoilers. In part three, we will cover leading and trailing edge flaps. Let's begin with a brief overview. The primary flight controls are hydraulically powered. There is no manual reversion. An upper and lower rudder move together to provide yaw control. The horizontal stabilizer has inboard and outboard elevators which move together to control airplane pitch. Inboard and outboard ailerons on each wing control roll. Spoilers assist the ailerons in roll control. Spoilers also function as in-flight speed brakes and ground spoilers. All primary flight control positions are displayed on the ICAS status display. Full displacement of the control surface causes full deflection of the pointer. The flight control shutoff switches are located on the overhead maintenance panel. The switches control hydraulic shutoff valves to the flight controls and are for maintenance use only. The ICAS advisory message flight control valves is displayed and the respective valve closed light illuminates if any flight control shutoff valve is closed. Leading and trailing edge flaps provide increased lift and decreased stall speed for takeoff and landing. The leading edge flaps are powered by bleed air, while the trailing edge flaps are hydraulically powered. Let's now look at the flight controls in more detail, starting with the rudders. Yaw control is provided by upper and lower rudders. Rudder power is supplied by all four hydraulic systems. Hydraulic systems 1 and 3 power the upper rudder, and systems 2 and 4 power the lower rudder. Pushing a rudder pedal deflects both rudders together in the desired direction. The mechanical system incorporates shear routes which allow rudder control to be regained if a jam occurs and a significant manual force is applied to the rudder pedals. A rudder pedal adjuster allows each pilot's pedals to be adjusted to a position which is comfortable and at the same time allows the pilot to achieve full rudder deflection plus full brake input. The pedals are adjusted by pulling the adjuster crank out, rotating it to the desired position, then releasing the crank into one of the detents. The rudder trim control and rudder trim indicator are located on the aisle stand. The rudder trim control is spring-loaded to the center off position. Rotating the control to nose left or nose right causes the rudder feel and trim mechanism to move the rudder neutral point in the desired direction. The rudder pedals move with trim inputs. The rudder trim indicator displays units of rudder trim. Next we'll look at the rudder ratio changers. The ratio changers reduce rudder deflections as airspeed increases. There is a separate rudder ratio changer for each rudder. The upper ratio changer controls the upper rudder, 
The lower ratio changer controls the lower rudder. On the ground and at low air speeds, pushing a rudder pedal to the stop results in full deflection of the rudder surfaces. As air speed increases, the ratio changers gradually reduce rudder surface response to pedal inputs. This protects the vertical tail structure from excessive stresses. At high air speeds, pushing a rudder pedal to the stop results in a small deflection of the rudder surfaces. An ICAS advisory message, rudder ratio single or rudder ratio dual is displayed if a fault is detected in one or both of the ratio changers. Whenever a fault is detected in a ratio changer, the ratio changer is automatically deactivated and rudder response to pedal inputs is no longer affected by airspeed changes. Rudder response remains the same as it was when the failure occurred. If a ratio changer fails at a low air speed, Abrupt pedal inputs may result in excessive rudder deflections as airspeed is increased. If a ratio changer fails at a high airspeed, full rudder deflection may not be available as airspeed is decreased and a crosswind landing limitation will apply. Question. Answer C is correct. As airspeed increases, the ratio changers gradually reduce rudder surface response to pedal inputs. This protects the vertical tail structure from excessive stresses. Yaw dampers provide rudder inputs to improve airplane directional stability and provide turn coordination. The yaw damper switches are located on the overhead panel. There are separate yaw dampers for the upper and lower rudders. Pushing a yaw damper switch on supplies hydraulic power to the respective yaw damper. The yaw dampers operate continuously in flight and are deactivated when ground mode is sensed. Yaw damper inputs do not result in rudder pedal motion. The ICAS advisory message, Yaw Damper, indicates that a yaw damper fault is detected and hydraulic power has automatically been removed from the respective yaw damper. The respective yaw damper in operative light also illuminates. The yaw damper messages are also displayed, and both inoperative lights illuminate until the first IRS is aligned. Pushing a yaw damper switch off removes hydraulic power from the yaw damper. The yaw damper message is displayed and the respective inoperative light illuminates.
When yaw dampers are deactivated due to ground sensing, the yaw damper message is not displayed and the inoperative lights do not illuminate. Let's now look at the elevators and stabilizer. Inboard and outboard elevators provide pitch control for the airplane. The elevators are powered by all four hydraulic systems. The mechanical system incorporates shear routes which allow elevator control to be regained if a jam occurs and a significant manual force is applied to the control columns. Elevator feel is provided at the control columns. The feel mechanism is powered by hydraulic systems 2 and 3. Loss of one hydraulic system has no effect on feel force. If both hydraulic systems fail, feel forces are provided by mechanical springs. The movable horizontal stabilizer provides pitch trim. Hydraulic systems 2 and 3 power stabilizer trim. Stabilizer trim switches are located on each control wheel. The alternate stabilizer trim switches are located on the control stand. Each pair of stabilizer trim switches contains two spring-loaded switches. The switches have three positions, airplane nose down, airplane nose up, and neutral. Moving both switches in the same direction provides trim signals to the stabilizer. If stabilizer trim inputs are opposite to control column inputs, the control column overrides the trim inputs. There are two stabilizer trim position indicators, one on each side of the control stand. The stabilizer trim indicators display units of stabilizer trim. An off flag is displayed at the bottom of the indicator if the stabilizer trim indicator has failed or is unpowered. Green bands on the stabilizer trim indicator display the allowable stabilizer trim takeoff range. There are three green bands, airplane nose down, mid band, and airplane nose up. The center of gravity, gross weight, and takeoff D-rate are entered into the FMS CDU. The correct green band is then calculated and displayed on the stabilizer trim indicator. ICAS advisory message stabilizer green band is displayed when weight on the nose gear sensed by the nose gear oleo pressure switch disagrees with the computed green band. The ICAST warning message, Configuration Stabilizer is displayed if thrust on engine 2 or engine 3 is increased to the takeoff range and the stabilizer trim setting is not within the green band. Question.
Answer C is correct. The stabilizer trim 2 and 3 cutout switches are located on the control stand. The switches regulate systems 2 and 3 hydraulic power to the stabilizer. With the stabilizer trim cutout switch in the auto position, cutout occurs automatically if uncommanded stabilizer trim is detected. With one hydraulic system cutout, stabilizer trim is one half normal rate. With the stabilizer trim cutout switch in the auto position, cutout occurs automatically if uncommanded stabilizer trim is detected. With one hydraulic system cut out, stabilizer trim is one half normal rate. If automatic cutout has occurred, hydraulic power remains shut off until the respective cutout switch is placed to the on position. If both stabilizer trim cutout switches are in the cutout position, all hydraulic power is removed from the stabilizer trim system. When one stabilizer trim cutout switch is in the cutout position, power from the respective hydraulic system is shut off and trim is one half normal rate. The on position supplies systems two or three hydraulic power to the stabilizer trim with no automatic cutout feature. Question. Answer A is correct. The ICAST caution message, Stabilizer Trim Unscheduled, is displayed when uncommanded stabilizer movement is detected and automatic cutout does not occur. The ICAST advisory message, Stabilizer Trim, is displayed when the respective stabilizer motor is inoperative when commanded to run, or automatic stabilizer cutout has occurred, or a stabilizer trim cutout switch is in the cutout position.